Hello, my name is Bethany Robinson, and I'm here to tell you about authentic living. Some benefits of authentic living are confidence, increased social capabilities, and greater chances of success. Here are some stories from those who have adopted the authentic lifestyle. I clean my teeth with charcoal. My friends kind of make fun of me for it, but who the fuck cares? Are their teeth getting whiter? I agree with them that the standards on beauty and teeth whitening are kind of fucked up, but my smile makes me feel better about myself, and I shouldn't feel bad about that. Sometimes when I'm thinking about him and how much I miss him, I pick up erotica and start reading. It's so interesting to see how sexualized literary content is for our internal pleasure. Yes, sometimes it's funny to read how he came all over him or fingered him or fucked his hole, but then I start to think about what the message really is. How most of these novels are written by straight women. How the main characters are conventionally hot, cisgendered, able-bodied guys. They always get a happy ending. At the airport, my dad gave me this tin of apples from when we went apple picking over the summer. I haven't eaten any yet. It's the sentiment, you know? It's like a piece of family is here with me. Adjusting anywhere new without family is so fucking hard. It's painful too. Creative decisions don't come without risk or discomfort. If you don't push yourself outside of the box, are you really an artist? What separates you from any other artist around you? What makes you different from any other artist? I think the double standard on armpit hair is insane. There's judgment from both sexes for a girl to have armpit hair and not shave. You get looks from both girls and guys for not shaving and walking around like this. Which is why I try to be as confident as I can when I walk around without shaving. Yeah, it's still terrifying even doing this without thinking about the way people will see me. These are my shower thoughts. I used to black out when I went under the rainbow tent thing as a kid. I think about Courage the Cowardly Dog a lot. I can't believe I have general anxiety disorder because of a Hannah Montana concert. Why did we all have to read Charlotte's Web and why can't I remember what it's about besides the animals? I wonder what my toenails look like under the, ta- under the nail polish and why it's not normal to have toenail polish on at all times. I wonder what my childhood friend Natasha that I haven't spoken to since kindergarten is doing right now. I started drinking coffee in middle school. My mom just told me last week that when I was born I had the umbilical cord wrapped around my neck and that's why I'm like this. I have over 60 Furbies. It's an expression of my identity to me. They're like family. I treat them like my children. People always look at me weirdly because I have them, but fuck people's expectations. Have you ever seen how cool they are? It shows my personality as well. I'm not afraid of what other people think of me. If anything, I think as a generation, we're reclaiming what it means to be normal and own kids' toys. I couldn't grow a mustache, so I decided to make one myself. My friends used to make fun of me, but now it's funny to see everyone's reaction when I have peanut butter on my face. This is my moose, Emmett. I had an imaginary friend named Emmett when I was 11. My parents thought it was really weird, and they shamed me for it. But I wanted to be able to put this voice inside my head into a tangible object. So I chose this moose head. Whenever he talks to me, his antlers move back and forth in the cutest way. His favorite food is canned beets. I think they're kind of gross, but to each their own, he's my best friend.